Hey there, and welcome to my tutorial about how to draw a sieve. Now, this video is gonna be a little bit longer, because at the end I will tell you the story of sieve. And if you want to skip right away to the story, you can click the annotation here. It's more like a theory about the story between Sif and Notorious, because the game itself normally doesn't really tell you uh, the story behind the bosses and the environment. Uh, you just get some slight clues every here and there. It's like a puzzle, uh, but the puzzle is not complete. Down in the description you can find the links that I used. Alright then, let's get to the drawing part now. As always, we are going to start with a circle for the head. And I'm going to draw it from a not complete sideways perspective. Sif is going to look a little bit downwards. And I'm going to draw the snout that is connected to this line, to this center line for the eyes. Just this very simple shape here and the nose which sticks, sticks out a little bit, it's not on the same plane as the snout itself. It has this kind of boxy shape to it. Okay, and we're going like this, I'm making this round curve and connect it for the snout. Now, we will continue with the ears, I just add them here at the border of, this, of the circle. Very... Sif has very round ears, it appears. So, yeah, I'm going to make this also. Sif is very much just a grey wolf. A uh, very simple, normal grey wolf. I'm going to continue with the chest. And because I told you he's going to look a little bit downwards, um, the head hangs a little bit downwards too, and I draw this oval shape that is much bigger than the circle for the head, exceptionally bigger, and I'm drawing the spine that extends over the body, and at the end we have the hip. So, I'm going to draw this oval a little bit backwards and the other one a little bit forwards because it depends on how the legs are aligned if they are going back or forwards so these ovals would also move like that and I want to draw Sif in a position that kind of looks like he is walking I'm going to Continue with the skeleton structure and for this I will at first draw the lines for the shoulders, continue on uh, to the legs. And this leg here is going a little bit backwards. Here this part is not exactly the same line, a little bit more forwards and then the paw itself. And I draw this section a little bit backwards because I want Sif to slightly lift up his leg, his paw, like so. Alright, we do the same now back here, the back legs. Pretty similar. Now, for this back leg, because it's going a bit, little bit backwards, what we do here is, I draw this part here, and this bone section pretty much goes straight up or down. Um, because this is um, just the way the bones are aligned in this position. Okay, we are going to continue here with the last leg, at first the shoulders, and this leg is going a little bit more forwards, so it's more like this. Oh, okay. It's 
So the last thing that is left is the tail for Sif's body and I want to drop his tail pretty much straight down. Now I'm going to draw a guideline for his sword or more exactly Artorius sword. And for this I'm going to draw at first just a straight and long line that goes pretty much all the way down to the ground because of how long it is. It's not just a sword, it's a great sword, therefore the size. Alright. Now, um, I want to do a little bit more prep work for the shape of the sword. And for this, I'm drawing it in very simplified sections. So, at first for the hilt, we draw this little uh, part here and then we draw this kind of box. About this size. And then, in front of this box, another one. About the same size, a little bit longer maybe. Okay. It doesn't matter if it looks a little bit messy. I will clear it up a little bit more in the second part of the sketch. So, for the first box I want to draw not all the way here at this corner but a little bit more downwards. This kind of shape. And the same on the other side. So these things are the base for the guard. And the guard has these two sections. These round cylinder-like sections. And at the end it's a little bit more wider. It's, it's more of an oval shape at the end here. Like so. And the same on the other side. You have this kind of cylinder shape here. The first section and the second section a little bit wider at the end. Okay. This looks... Okay. So, for the second box, we also add a little bit something to it. We have this kind of triangular shape that extends over it. And this is where the blade is starting. Blade. It's kind of broad. And very long. I'm not very... I'm not focusing on doing it very accurately and very straight. I will do that later. And so at the end of the blade it gets thinner and thinner. Until we get the tip. Same on the other side. Because of the angle, I'm actually drawing it the this middle line, not exactly the middle. Give it this three-dimensional look. So well, the plate is looking a little bit messy, but as I told you before, I will going to I'm going to fix it later. And at the end here we have the grip. Very simple cylinder shape, long cylinder shape. And then the pommel, which is also parted into several sections. First, we have this also this small cylinder. Then we have this roundness. And another cylinder shape. Like so. And then a pointy end, like a like a cone. All right. So and this is 
the basic form of the sword without any further details in it or something. And of course a little bit messy. But we are going to start the second part of the sketch now. And correct a little bit of it. And so just doing this very quickly and we have this kind of round part here which with this little edge and also a round part here then I mark down here this kind of arrow shapes that will connect with this part then I make this kind of round line here a little bit longer round line a little bit longer curve and then extend it very long like so with this edge here and then go over it very long till we get to the end with the tip that closes all right and we have these um, edges here that I'm going to connect now They're a little bit rounder actually like so you see at the other side a little bit less of it because of the perspective okay <clears throat> and we have here a very flat part then we round it up here the base of the of the card and then now these sections here have this additional detail like these parts here and we start from here and make a curve down like this I'm not going to add any uh, complicated details, it has a lot of um, engravings and whatnot, but um, I tried to learn it, however oh, it's way too much work and I don't have the patience for that, like in the time where I'm learning to do these engravings and how they, how they look like specifically for this sort. In this time I could do much more drawings and uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, just fuck it. Alright, then here, this part, and yeah, this is pretty much the basic shape of the sword, I'm going to add a little bit of three dimensionality by drawing this middle lines here. And yeah, then the base of the of the blade is a little bit more curved here at the beginning, and then it goes pretty much straight. And I'm going to draw it now more accurately by doing this. This is like the equivalent of using a ruler until to this point here. Trying to make this parallel. Alright, at the end I have to draw by hand again. Alright. This looks much straighter now. Now I will add a little bit more detail to the blade we have here the middle line along the middle line additional details the first is kind of diamond shape long diamond shape and then we continue a little bit longer than this section here and then we have this um, how to say, like more of a uh, route shape, if, if I say that correctly. 
It's more like 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 uh, wings that extend, like so. Okay. Then this part's uh, gonna continue on a little bit longer until it gets to an end, like about here. Not all the way at the end of the blade. Okay, I'm going to continue here with the grip very quickly and the pommel, which is gonna be pretty much just the, sh uh, just the same because there's not much more to it actually. Like so, that's it. Alright. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more detail to Sif himself. Starting with the nose, so more of a bean like shape to it, actually. Okay. Extend. And. I'm drawing it in a the fur in a very simplified way now. And Sif is actually very fluffy. Like you can see it in the game at least. Uh, when you encounter him, he's like an explosion of fur. <laughs> I know it's just a graphical style, but still <laughs> looks kinda kinda silly. Um yeah, I'm going to draw the eye here and add a little bit of the to the tiredness of this wolf. And well, when you encounter Sif, you immediately feel a difference to the other bosses. Like normally, the bosses are really huge and disgusting or scary and this kind of stuff but Sif? Sif is just a big wolf like you can see it here and there's nothing more to him than that as in, in terms of being an enemy a, a boss to beat he just swings around his great sword and that's it um, and you immediately also feel this kind of melancholic uh, atmosphere like you, you feel kind of bad when you you attack him and kill him and normally when you fight against the boss and you get uh, beyond a certain threshold uh, well like you get below 50% um, or 30% then they get to the second form or something like that this is a very common a thing that happens with bosses. However, with Sif, the thing that happens is that he is starting to whimper and is hurt and you feel even worse for <laughs> fighting against him. It's really awful. Oh my. And yeah, as I told you in the intro, um, the game is very cryptic about its story. You normally learn about it just from item descriptions from the environment or the few lines that you get from NPCs and that's pretty much it and you have to kind of puzzle the story together by yourself and there are a lot of um, missing parts in this puzzle that you have to fill out by yourself um, but it's kind of cool but yeah if you play the game normally then you barely get anything you barely uh, notice anything about the story itself like when I played through the game I had no idea what actually was going on in this world this was just a bunch of uh, cool looking but also disgusting monsters and uh, zombie guys and whatnot and this pretty much it <laughs> and I had to educate myself by watching some videos and reading some theories in order to uh, actually know a little bit about the story and yeah 
So when you at the end going to listen to the story of Sif, I have to give you a slight um, spoiler warning, but only slightly, because well, if you're going to play the game normally, then you won't really notice the story anyway. Um, you would have to read all the descriptions and you have to piece them together. It's a lot of work actually, and so I think as a normal gamer you would normally not really do that. And so if you play the game normally, uh, then you won't learn um, what you are going to hear from me at the end of this video. So I would say it's still fine if even if you haven't played the game but you want to, um, that you can still listen to it. But hey, if you still wanna get surprised and um, construct a story by, by yourself, then yeah, what you can do is of course uh, mute the video during this part or something like that. It's completely fine. Now I'm going to I'm drawing here the pause set it before here and what I'm doing normally is I draw these oval shapes four of them uh, and then here the middle part also when we uh, can see the bottom part of his paw and then add a little bit more detail ah. yeah well, come on come here My hopper is going crazy again. Well, I'm going to make it a little bit more detailed, a little bit edgier, and add some claws. Of course. Then the fur, so it's not all um, paw pad, but only these circular parts of it. And as a wolf, he has also this additional claw, the dew claw around, like about this at this um, position here and also here you can barely see the carpal pad, an, an additional pad here and yeah, if you want to learn a little bit more about how to draw wolves I made a um, tutorial video about that, just about wolves and uh, their anatomy and their you will learn a little bit additional stuff than here. So I'm going to very quickly, as, as I told you, he's very fluffy and so I'm drawing the fur lines very long. So, and let's get to this leg here. Extends here, <clears throat> then has a slight curve and then follows this oval shape. And then straight down. And again we have these four ovals for the paw. From this perspective of course we'd only see two or three. It's unavoidable. A little bit more detail. And the back legs, the back paws normally ha don't have a additional claw or something like that. Yeah, what is it? What is it? And the same for the last leg here. This part is going to follow the oval shape a little bit. And of course the four ovals for the paw. Add in some claws, in more detail. And there we go. And for the end, just the tail of very long hair. And this is pretty much it. I'm adding also a little bit of fur lines here, I forgot. And a little bit more around the eyes. 
this is pretty much it if I see correctly I can turn off the first sketch Come on. and yeah this is the basic shape of Sif the great gray wolf with his sword so now I would like to tell you the story of Sif as mentioned before uh, there is a slight uh, spoiler warning for it if you haven't played the game yet and you still want to construct the story by yourself which is actually a lot of work um, then you can mute the video or just skip it uh, completely up to you so this time I won't get back to you after I'm done with the drawing but the story will be the last part of the video so I'm already saying thank you and if you have any questions, feedback or requests for me, then as always you can let me know in the comment section. Alright then, have fun drawing! Artorius, alone a pure-hearted swordsman from Astora, was on his way to Alalondo to seek out Gwyn load of sunlight, to give a warning about the plague in darkness spreading in New Londo, corrupting kings and knights. During his travels he crossed paths with a caravan of bandits who had a young wolf with them trapped in a cage. Out of pity for this innocent creature, Atoris tried to free the wolf quietly. However, Creaking of the cage and the excited whimpering of the wolf made the bandits notice him. Artorias managed to free the wolf, who ran away as quickly as possible. Yet Xavier, however, wasn't as fast, and so he had to fight against the outlaws. He was completely outnumbered, and the odds were against him. But then, out of nowhere, a female assassin appeared swiftly killed one after another. The curious wolf retreated into the woods followed Artorias, watching him from a distance. Artorias leached on Alondo and started to serve on a Lord Gwyn. He trained very hard among the Silver Knights and became one of the most skillful warriors of them all. One day when he was out of the city, he decided to go back to the forest where he saved the wolf. Artorias clearly noticed that the wolf was watching him. He sat down and waited for the wolf to come out. The lonesome animal of the forest was very careful, but still curious. And Artorias had a kind aura about him that made the young wolf trust him. They understood each other. Atarius knew what it means to be alone, without family and friends. Arturius continued to visit the wolf every single day after that, and they became close friends. Alvina, the feline guardian of the forest, noticed the warm kindness of Atarius and approached him. She told him the wolf's name, Sif, and entrusted him to Atarius. Lord Gwyn assigned Atorius the task to cleanse New Londo, and so he traveled together with a group of sealers to the cursed place. Sif noticed that all of a sudden Atorius wasn't coming anymore, and followed him by tracking his scent. Atorius had a plan. He would swear his allegiance to the four kings of New Londo in order to obtain the dark powers he sought to slay them. Kings did not fully trust Atorius and sent him into the abyss to prove himself. Within the seemingly endless darkness, the serpent cave approached Atorius and offered him the dark power of the abyss. He accepted, and a flood of chaotic emotions rushed into his mind. His dark soul was enhanced, and he started to lose control more and more. However, he managed to resist and keep his sanity. He swung at Cave, who retreated back into the abyss. Atorius lost his holy aura and was therefore weak against the kings. As soon as he returned from the abyss, the four kings attacked him. The fight was looking grim for Atorius, 
However, in the moment of great danger, Sif came to his friend's aid. Together, they succeeded in striking the four kings back into the abyss. New London was flooded, and since then, the ghosts of the sunken innocents roamed through the ruins. The city could not have been saved. It was long lost. Atorius was rewarded with a silver pendant to repel the dark, and a new sword. He entrusted Sif with his new sword, for as within Atorius's hands, it would just stay in black like his current sword already did. The abyss was spreading in Ula's hill, and so Atorius the abyss walker was sent to the city, together with Hawk Igoth, the expert's dragon sniper and Lord's Blade Siren, the silent assassin who saved Atorius back then in the forest. The source of the expanding darkness was Menace, father of the Abyss, whose rampage went out of control. Artorius descended into the chasm together with Sif, while the other two were assigned to protect the survivors. During the conflicts, Artorius lost his pendant. His armor still provided protection against the dark humanity spirits, but it was too dangerous for Sif. Artorius left his shield with Sif to save his loyal friend and went alone with a sword to fight Menace. The fight was fierce and they exchanged blow after blow, but Menace was a creature he never fought before. Menace's blinding emotions of rage, fear, and hunger for power influenced and infected Atorius' heart, which was already cursed by the abyss. He couldn't resist the darkness anymore, and so he lost control of himself. Artorius was not able to tell friend and foe apart, and killed everything in sight. He was lost. His two comrades did not have the heart to end his life, and so they retired as knights and remained with the dear friend to watch over him. Until one day, a warrior who traveled through time and space put a Taurus out of his misery and slew Menes. Sif, who grew big and old, still protects the grave of Atorius with his great sword. He will never forget his friend, who always cared for the weak. And therefore Sif is waiting for the fateful day when someone powerful enough comes who strives to walk into the abyss to end what Atorius has started.